In order to acquire Tundra Homestead, you will have to purchase the property first from Proventus Avenici. The property is 7,500 gold, and it is referred to as the homestead outside of the city. Wonderful. Here's the key to your new home. Now, you will notice that unlike the um, home inside of the city, <laughs> uh, Bree's home, you do not have to purchase any additional room upgrades or additions. Tundra Homestead isn't very far from White Run, as you can tell. Um, it is a little bit of a walk, but nothing that's too, uh, too unbearable. Now, when you walk up, it's a long... Oh, goodness. It has friendly dragon neighbor, apparently. But um, you can see White Run here. There is the Reach. And this is your pathway up to the home. Which I will say, it's extremely aesthetic. Um, at least I think that. I think so. It looks really nice. Um, now, if we can take a look at the items outside before our little dragon friend comes. You have a sort of stall barn area here. Nothing too crazy to go on about. And then we can come around here and we have our smelter and essentially our work area. There is a workbench. Uh, you have a good storage chest here, tanning rack, grindstone, etc. to get your you know, just work on outside for crafting or making anything, um, tools and so on and so forth. It does include a nice little garden with some of these plants already planted and then you have, it looks like about eight plots that you could still plant with whatever you'd like. You also have two apiaries, um, which are very nice off here to the side, and you've probably already noticed that it has a bit of um, plant life already surrounding it. You know, you got some tundra cotton, lavender, dragon's tongue, um, and I think we have a few other plants over here. Uh, there are plenty of bees and butterflies around, and oh my goodness, we have quite a few friendly neighbors around here. <laughs> but um, just a few plants for, uh, for your alchemy if you go that route. Now there is a note here, which I think this is just to also indicate that the home is for sale in case you didn't go about the route of talking to the steward. Um, so there is that for you. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and enter... Um, the Tundra Homestead. Now this home is not very large, as you can essentially tell right off the bat, um, but it does give you an extremely nice, warm, and cozy feeling. You have some seating right off to the uh, start here, you have a strong box, a cupboard, this cupboard is usable, um, and then you go over here and you have a desk area with a lot of nice little storage. Um, you have a small chest here, you have a safe down here, and it gives you just the very good vibe of actually being a desk, which sometimes desk areas in Skyrim don't always give off that impression to me, but they do a nice job there. You have your little table and your fire and cooking surfaces. Um, you have a cooking pot and you also have the baking surface. Now the baking surface is essentially used as your oven without being the large construction of an oven, which is really nice. Um, you kind of have the benefits of it without it taking up a bunch of room. Um, and here you have a cupboard, another cupboard, um, some sacks of flour, and some food they already provide to you. So you have a nice little uh, kitchen to start things off with here, and plenty of places to put your food. Um, usually when I've played this game, you know, I just put everything I want here in this large cupboard, and it works really nicely because it's just right there. 
Uh, now if we go over here, we have, I believe, the bedrooms. Yep. So the bedroom is combined with your children's bedroom, um, which is unusual for, once again, a small player home. So you have your two children's bed with their chest um, and a few things here that indicate it being a child's bedroom. Um, we have a couple different shrines with the Shrine of Akatosh and the Shrine of Mara. Uh, and then you have your bed. Um, there is some decent storage with a uh, dresser, you have a knapsack you can use, and then you also have a bookcase over here, which of course I believe you could technically still put um, other items in as well if you want. Yeah, so I mean, technically you can use it however you see fit. Um, and then we do have some usable bookshelves here as well. So pretty simple but effective um, and just kind of nice and cozy. And then if we walk on over here, we have this beautiful little room. Um, I really love the look of the hanging moss and you can actually harvest this hanging moss, which is really nice. Um, you can harvest your glowing mushrooms, so they go ahead and give you some resources right there. Um, and then you have an alchemy table, you have a satchel here, you have a cupboard that you can use, you have um, a uh, safe box here, another satchel, and then you have a cupboard here, barrels, sack. Uh, over here you have a chest, we have some nightshade that's plotted and will regrow, um, and then of course we have our enchanting table, another cupboard, a cupboard, um, I think those are the two main storage for over here aside from our chest, and then we also have another shrine uh, alongside our enchanter. So this room obviously is an extremely effective room for alchemy and enchanting with some great benefits of the plant life to be able to harvest that continuously um, for your alchemy and such. And it's got some really good storage as well, which is of course always a big thing for me because I personally like to hoard stuff. Uh, so that's always really nice for me. Now, you saw I went down through that trapdoor, and we have entered the cellar of the Tundra homestead. Um, they have kind of a nice little, sort of, I guess you would say, lobby area. Um, not quite a lobby, but you know. Uh, we have a usable bookshelf, and then we have some just regular bookcase storage. Uh, I do like the effect of the barred door, because it does give the feeling of this being a more um, just, you know, secret important storage area so over here we have a place for all of our dragon claws now i haven't actually stored all of my dragon claws on here and i'm not sure if i have the golden dragon claw on me i do not but i do know for a fact that sometimes the dragon claw specifically the golden dragon claw falls out um i don't believe that's something they've fixed but it is just kind of a little tidbit that, at least for the Golden Claw, I know um, does occur, which kind of always bothered me, but obviously that's an extremely small little fluke. Um, but just something to note there that I personally know does happen. Moving on though, we have some mannequins, we have some weapon plaques, we do have some display cases, and they are uh, active dagger racks, which are nice because, um, as I've said before, sometimes when the display cases are not, you know, something that you specifically have to activate, it can be really challenging to place something in there uh, kind of manually yourself. More mannequins, more uh, plates, and then we have our jar series that can go up here with Torsten's skull key. And then a weapon rack. You have some more mannequins here in the center. Now this is a case that is not activated. You would have to put um, kind of whatever you want in here yourself manually. Which, I mean, it's still nice because it is a larger case. But it's just something to kind of take into consideration. You have a chest down here with a safe. And then we have a area for all of your masks. Another weapon rack. The Paragons can go up here, Oreo's shield can be placed there, more mannequins, and another mannequin, and of course these display cases here. So it's a nice little trophy room. I actually really do like it because it's not too overwhelmingly large, um, and it just feels like the layout is pretty nice for it. I like where the mannequins are placed, I like how um, the items are placed, and honestly sometimes uh, when when player homes have a spot for every little significant item, um, it gets a little overwhelming, and I think they just keep all the essentials um, 
active and available and that's just really nice you don't need to have absolutely everything um shown and uh you know promoted in your home or if you do then of course there are other player homes but this is a really great easy player home to get right off the bat being a low amount of 7500 gold um, it's really pretty it's you know effective it's just it looks good uh, and it is smaller um, but I feel like it's definitely a good uh, starter starter home um, so in that regard, I, I think it's a winner. Um, I've really enjoyed using it before. I found that all of the storage solutions are extremely effective. Um, and just, you know, they're conveniently placed. You don't feel like you're going out of your way or going somewhere unnatural in order to grab uh, something, which I appreciate because when I do come to my player home, usually, you know, you're not spending a ton of time here, but you're coming to quickly drop stuff off and to continue on uh, with your journey as the Dova King. So in that regard, I, uh, I really appreciate it. And unfortunately, we've been turned into a vampire without our uh, meaning to. But yeah, so that is our little quick tour of the Tundra Homestead. It's not a huge player home, as we've already discussed, so it's a, it's a pretty easy wrap-up. But I just wanted to go ahead and give that quick little roundabout um, in case you were still wondering of, you know, if you wanted to go ahead and get it from the Creation Club. Just another small thing here, obviously there is a Corundum Ore vein which is convenient. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other. Usually the player homes do have some resources available when they can. Um, obviously be wary of the the hostiles that are extremely close by. Um, we've seen a dragon, we've seen a giant, and now we have a saber cat. So there is that, but the location of this home honestly is also extremely pretty. Um, I know Whiterun is a big favorite uh, city for a lot of people. So it is kind of nice to have this just much more functional, um, you know, just nicer player home available without it being too much more gold than even your Breeze home. And honestly, um, I might go ahead and do the math uh, here in a second, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if you can essentially get the Tundra homestead for about the same amount as it costs to fully furnish the Breeze home. So I will pull that number and I'll uh, place it on the screen here for you guys so you can see that. But anyways, um, so yeah, I think this is definitely the home you would much rather uh, choose to uh, take on versus the Breeze home. If, uh, if you're starting a new game and you just want a more uh, functional, better looking and better storage player home. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and like my video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can stay in the loop for all of my future content. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to catch you next time.